Ciao Italia, ciao bella, bellissimo, hello, and congratulations to Fabrizio Moro and Irma Meta for winning San Remo 2018. They very quickly accepted the offer then to sing at Eurovision 2018. They are ready to share their song and I am ready to listen. Shall we talk about this? Ooh, let's do this. <laughs> Yes, they are singing the song, You Did Nothing To Me. Well, I gotta correct that. You did something to me. This song is so interesting and it really makes me feel something. I don't necessarily know what that is. It's instantly gripping. I want to know what they're going to sing. I want to know what's going to come next. I like the contrast in their voices. One's a bit higher, one's a bit deeper. I love the folksy feel. It almost reminds me of Dino Merlin from Bosnia and Herzegovina a few years ago. This is not as happy as that, but it has that kind of regional quality, folksy, mysterious. I love their attitude and swagger, the commitment, the drive, the power, the t -t -t. It just, there's like a force. It's a quiet song and yet there's force mm -hmm. behind it. It seems to be moving forward. I love the look. One of them's got the shag do. One of them's got the tattoo. It's just interesting. Final thought for me, I like the message. They are done with terror. They are done with people trying to change our lives, change our way of life. You know, some might say it's political. It's actually humanitarian. The song is ultimately about peace. This is not, I don't fi find this politically provocative. I think it's relevant. I think it's timely. And I'm thrilled to have it in the competition. Bernardo. It was very difficult for Italy to come this year after a song like, like Francesco's and a hit song like Francesco had last year. And I'm very glad they went for message, a strong message, instead of like a good stage show with a gorilla. Yes, I know that had a message as well, a very important satirical message, but this one is more timely uh, and it's more adapted to a strong and, and nasty reality the world is facing nowadays. Um, and I think that if you know the meaning of the song and what's behind it, it really touches you. And the way the song is constructed and the production, it feels very Italian, but at the same time, you can see that there's emotion in it um, uh, as well. And it's very San Remo. So uh, I'm not surprised that it, it topped the juries or, and, and won the entire competition. Um, it also is making, it's also make, making waves in, in Portugal already, the song, because um, all newspapers or most of, of our newspapers already uh, picked on the story and the fact that it's a song with a message because now we are all with songs with a message because Salvador had a lovely message and everything with a message now is as really is really important for us uh, here in Portugal uh, and yeah they already are having promotion here and the song was selected like what three days ago so well done for them I, I really like the song it's a good song yeah it wasn't necessarily my favorite in the San Remo selection, but I really like the song and I think it's a deserving winner. And it's refreshing in a way to see a male male duet because mm. usually it's a male and female. And it's refreshing as well that it's not about love or breakup and um, that it's about the terror terrorism. And I kind of have to roll my eyes when people it was the same with Madame Monsieur. The people are like, this is political. And you're kind of thinking, how is it political not to want people drowning in the sea? How is it political not to have people blown up by bombs? Like, that's just kind of basic common sense. Um, so, yeah, I don't buy that political argument at all. And I really like it. It's typical Italian straight away. You know where it is, even if you didn't know they were singing Italian. And their voices, like you said, the contrast works and they're able to carry, you know that there's something serious in the song and they carry the emotion through their voices, even though I don't understand a word of Italian. And one thing, though, that I am not quite concerned about, but maybe intrigued, is to see what would happen when it's revamped for Eurovision, because it has about a few seconds, I think, of an old song that one of the composers had written beforehand in it which was fine by San Remo rules, but for your vision, they've said that they have to change it and it's all, it's too long anyway for the three minute rule. So I hope that they don't kind of lose the essence and the power when they're, when they bring it to the cutting room. 
Absolutely. I don't speak Italian either, but I think he name checks enough geographical regions that you're able to very quickly pick up on the situation. There's at least Cairo, London, France. And let me just read you the translation. And you'll be able to pick up Bataclan, you know, bombing in London, stabbing in London, etc. In France, there's a concert. People have fun. Someone sings loudly. Someone cries death. In London, it always rains. But today, it does not hurt. The sky does not even discount a funeral. In Nice, the sea is red with fires and shame of people on asphalt and blood in the sewer. And this huge body we call Earth, wounded in its organs from Asia to England, galaxies of people dispersed in space. That's real poetic. Yeah. It's like that really gets you. And you know, certainly on the BBC in the UK, you can press a button to read the lyrics and translation during the show, or at least you used to be able to. And the commentators will pick up on this as well, and this will get lots of press ahead of the show. It's really quite powerful, but I don't think it's cheesy. I don't think it's a forced message. In some of the other selections, you have people saying, oh, save the children, you know, blah, blah. And it's just like cringe, whereas this is not cringe at all. This is gripping, gripping, gripping. And I also think, well, I know there's no LED screen, but they could do something interesting. Like Lisa Angel had a kind of city of destruction, if you recall, and it looked amazing. She didn't do so well, but it looked amazing. <sighs> and like in their music video, they show just the buildings and like they do have people suffering as well. You don't even have to go that far to convey the idea. You just have a city destroyed. There are ways, to, you know, to make this kind of come through, to get this idea across without turning it into an English language song. Because... A, we know Italy loves to keep it in Italian, and I think it sounds amazing in Italian, so please leave it in Italian. What? In any case, we, of course, are not Italian. So why don't we hear from our Italian blogger, Christian, who is on the ground. He's been following this closely, and he's got a lot to say. Roll the tape. Ciao, Christian. Ciao, William. Ciao. Oh, you, of course, are very humble, but I'm going to boast. You are the Weeby Blogs Italy correspondent, and you work for the Italian Authority, Eurofestival News. You know everything mm -hmm. about Sanremo, everything about Eurovision. So we have to get your opinion. What do you think of the Sanremo winners? Okay. This is a weird question for me because I would like to be, you know, enthusiastic. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Herman Meta and Fabrizio Moro won. Well, I'm not. The song is good. I'm not saying that the song is not good. They are two very, you know, good songwriters. They have their careers. They have very beautiful song. I'm not a fan of this song. I'm not saying that their victory... Uh, is not worthy, but um, they are not even in my top five if we talk about Saremo 2018. Anyway, I support uh, uh, every Italian contestant at Eurovision and I will support them in Lisbon. This is a good song because it's a song about, you know, peace, uh, they sing about uh, terrorism and they, you know, speak about all this very tragic events that happened in in London, in Egypt, in France. So the song has a very, very strong message. So I think that we can achieve a good result at Eurovision. I cannot say which position because we don't really have another similar song in the past, at least I think. So I cannot make a comparison between Non mi avete fatto niente and another Eurovision entry. But I think that the point at Eurovision, especially now in, this, in these years, is to enter a real good song, not something especially written for the contest. And this is Non mi avete fatto niente. They brought this, con this song for the, the Italian festival, not for the Eurovision. Mm -hmm. You know, we had 1944, we had uh, Amar Pelos Deutsch. I'm not saying that we will win Eurovision. It's very <laughs> difficult. But to be honest, after last year, I want to leave this Eurovision with calm. I don't want to be among the favorites. Last <laughs> <laughs> year was so stressful for me. Probably the worst Eurovision for me live after Vienna and Stockholm, because, you know, we had this, this feeling that we were set, set up to fail during the week, because Amar Pelos Dois was rising and rising and rising. It was like a phoenix. And so I like that we are not among the favorites. I think that we are very low now in the odds and perfectly fine with it. 
And may I ask you, has the issue of the song being political come up in Italian media? Have the artist addressed this issue? Actually not, because the song, as I already said, it has a strong message, but it's something more about peace than about war or political, because they not sing about governments are doing something bad or politicians are not good, you know. They sing about peace and they sing about something that terrorists did. I don't think that the song has a political message, but the song has for sure a peaceful message. You know, it's something not political, but something about peace. And what's the reaction been among the broader Italian Eurovision community and then also Italy at large? Okay, this is not... A simple question to answer. Not many Eurovision fans in Italy would have chosen Ermal Meta and Fabrizio Moro. Probably because maybe they have another idea about the Eurovision Act. Many people thought about Annalisa or The Colors or even Lo Stato Sociale. But not many people were uh, talking about Meta and Moro as the, you know, the perfect Eurovision entrance. And, and they... Many people think that this is not the good choice for the Eurovision because, you know, it's in Italian and many people want to understand the message. We have to do something to, uh, to make us understand. But, you know, Amar Pelos Deutsch was in Portuguese. The, the thing is that Amar Pelos Deutsch was a song about love. And the love doesn't need a language, actually. <laughs> it, it, was, it was easy to get that he was singing about love and not about aliens or <laughs> you know, something else. This is different because there is another type of message. I don't really know what we can do on the stage, the performance. Probably they, they wouldn't do nothing, actually, because they are not the type of singers that you know, come up with uh, choreographies or weird uh, stages. I think they will just sing this this song. That's it. That, that's all. And I don't really know what what the um, Lisbon stage will be. I mean, I think that we won't have the LED um, L L I D in English. I think. Uh, so I don't really know if we can have some images in the background, maybe something about terrorism. I, I don't know. It's, it's a very random choice if we think about Eurovision. And today, it's Tuesday, so like two or three days after, and I still didn't realize that we are sending Meta and Moro. And I really want to, you know, uh, make this idea clear because I know that many fans will see this video. I'm not against Ermal Meta, I'm not against Fabrizio Moro. They are good. I just can't see them, cannot see them at Eurovision. It's, it's strange, you know, for me. Because, you know, if I think about Annalisa, she has a good voice, very perfect image, pop song, or maybe Lo Stato Sociale. A copy of Gabani. Many people said that they were like mm. Gabani because Gabani had a monkey and they had an old woman dancing. But the song was very catchy. Uh, earworm. Christian, you never cease to amaze me with that Italian <laughs> realness. <laughs> Giving us info yeah. on the ground in Italy. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, William. Grazie mille. And we will see you in Lisbon. Absolutely. Yeah. Good luck, you guys. It's not just Christian who has something to say. My sister, oddly enough, who's become a Eurovision fan, I went on her Instagram stories and then I find this. Look, she's sitting here saying this is her winner of Eurovision 2018. I'm like, girl, we still have to hear like 30 plus songs. In any case, it's striking a chord with many different people, including we bloggers. Here are some of our other team members, teammates from around the world. Roll the tape. 
Hi, it's Suzanne. So this morning I had the opportunity to listen to San Remo, um, beautiful duet by Armal and Armat. Um, okay, I may be confusing the first name, and Fabrizio. Um, from the moment they started speaking, I was absolutely enthralled by the song. So often you've heard me say, gosh, the accent's throwing me off, or the fact that this is in another language and I don't know what they're saying is throwing me off. Um, that did not matter with this song because I was intrigued. Um, and as I listened, I just thought the language was so beautiful and realized that it was in Italian. Um, I'm currently reading Eat, Pray, Love as I prepare for a journey to Bali. And it was really exciting to read what Elizabeth Gilbert says about the beauty of the Italian language and then to listen to this song that really just drew me in. Um, you all know that I'm over love song after love song after love song. And one of the emerging themes is not love songs um, that I'm seeing in Eurovision 2018, which I super like. Um, and this song is, it's about terrorism and the heartache and strife that exists in our world today, but it's about how we are still united. We live in this big world together and we're in this space of one big hug, which is such a fantastic concept. And um, it's about how all of the heartache and strife and terrorism really can't change who we are. Um, we are still united, we are still connected, we are still in this world of love and in this world of one big hug. So, so excited that, again, this beautiful duet won Italy and cannot wait to see them in Lisbon. And I really hope that I have the opportunity to meet Fabrizio in person because, well, I think I might be in love with Fabrizio. So that's all for now. Really, really, really like Italy's pick. Super excited. See you later. Deb and Adoremi WeeWeeBlogs.com. Now, ciao, Bella, and congratulations for San Remo. Now, you've come out with Ermal and Fabrizio. Now, between them, they have 14 albums. Excellent. Did they win the press vote? Yes, they did. Did they win the jury vote? Yes, they did. How about the public vote? Yes, they did. Oh, I tell you what. I tell you what, it's going to be tough in Lisbon, but all aboard. This is an excellent song, keeps me moving. I feel that singer-songwriter vibe. It's authentic. It feels Italian and it's crossing over, crossing over to my voting scorecard. So let's get dialing. Let's get voting. Let's do this. Hello, this is Aline from Belgium. After the great success of Occidentalist Karma last year, Italy kind of disappointed me this year. Um, of course, I expected the song to be not as perfect as Occidentalist Karma last year, but um, yeah, I all I can say is that I really like the rhythm of the song. I love that it's an up, upbeat song, um, but I'm not a fan of the lyrics and I'm not a big fan of the voices either. This is Raphael from Chicago. I'm super excited that San Remo is bringing another refreshing artist to Eurovision. I think the duo is a little bit odd, which people should remember. My biggest worry is that the lyrics contain so much of the meaning of the song that it's just going to go right over people's heads. So I hope that when they think of how to stage this song at Eurovision, they use more of the imagery that they took uh, in the music video as opposed to the blank stage that they had at San Remo, um, because I think that's where a lot of my understanding of the song came from. Um, and I hope that they don't have to resort to translating the song from its original Italian, which I think is beautiful. All right, good luck. This is Ant from Sydney, Australia, and Italy. Well, Italy is the definition of average this year. The song that they've chosen might have been a good choice at San Remo, but it really needs a lot of work to become a successful Eurovision entry. Italy are definitely capable of a good revamp, but this needs a lot of work if they're going to make any sort of impact like they have recently. Jonathan in the UK here. At the moment, I do find Italy's song a bit one note and it does drag on a bit. Though hopefully once they've revamped it down to three minutes, that might help. But I do also worry like with France, with it being so heavily driven by its lyrical content, how they're going to sell this on stage, particularly without the use of an LED screen 
um, if they keep it all in Italian. But it definitely continues Italy's trend of very respectable Eurovision entries since their 2011 release. From the Netherlands, I think this song is absolutely beautiful and it has a great message. And I think Meta and Moro are definitely the right artists to sing this song because they can really bring it with taste. Witness, so interesting to hear all of those thoughts. Bernardo, how do you think this could do at Eurovision? I think I'll put it in the same place as trends at the moment. They have a very nice message, but I think both of them will rely on staging a lot and now they can convey their message uh, to the public. I think this might do in line with Francesca Michelin from 2016. I know that's not a very, very good result, but it's not terrible. Um, I think the message is really good, but I don't know. I think more songs will come out and eventually it, this one will not stand out as much unless it gets the press attention and, it's get, and it gets the publicity. And with that, maybe, maybe it can gain uh, a bit more points. But I think the crucial factor here is the staging. And I think that's going to be what defines the outcome of the song. I think what's going to help this song, even if we ignore the song itself, is the two performers, because they're both established pop stars, like Irma was winning MTVs just before Christmas. So he's no small little up and coming singer who's going to get nervous on stage. They know how to own a stage. They have a massive following. And I think that I don't think it's going to be Italy's best ever result. I don't think they can match Il Volo. But I can't see it slipping lower than Francesca Michelin back in 2016. And I think she might come 15th or something. So I think it's anywhere between kind of 15th and maybe top five. Um, a lot of it depends on staging. A lot of it depends on what other songs come its way. But it's kind of a bit like it's completely different song and style, but in one way, but it's kind of a bit like Marco Mangoni that the Italian charm could work to their advantage. And he had very little in terms of staging and it was just him standing there and yet he got top 10. Yeah, I feel like with staging, Italy can be a bit hit or miss. Emma Marone, it didn't work. Francesco Gabbani, it didn't work at Eurovision. But as you say, Marco Mangoni, on point. Il Volo, they won the televote, it worked. So that is gonna be crucial. Interestingly, I don't think these two artists particularly care about winning. They don't strike me as the kind of guys who are like, I have to win Eurovision, because to Porig's point, they're already established. I think they actually believe in their message, and they actually want to get the message out, and for them, that is a victory, so well done them. I think their final result, I think their final result may also hinge on how many countries pursue the kind of Salvador authentic line. Spain already mm -hmm. has a simple, authentic, powerful song, this is, in a way, a simple, authentic, powerful song. If we get too many simple, authentic, powerful songs, they're going to start sounding alike, and there can only be one winner. Yeah. It's kind of like Salvador. In his semifinal, there were many ballads, like Blackbird, but his ballad was the ballad of the year, and so all the other ones dropped like flies. Taco, bye. You know, Finland, bye. It was one of those situations. Yeah. So this could become a match of death between Spain, Italy, and dot, 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 whoever else. France, Just Albania. There we go. It's just, it's getting um, hot in Crowded. here. Yeah, <laughs> but I do like this song. And it's, um, Italy is, they always mix it up. You never know yeah. what Italy's going to send. And that's why I love Italy. And also on the Francesca point, I loved Francesca and her song, but the staging I think maybe didn't work in the end. People were having a hard time connecting kind of the vegetable garden with like the song. and the, So maybe if they give something more cohesive, they can avoid... For Italy, what is a so-so result? For, I mean, for the UK, we'd be like, yes, mid table. <laughs> In any case, that is what we think and what they think and what Christian thinks. What do you think? <laughs> Let us know here on Movie Blogs. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. Join the notification squad by hitting the bell and then give us a big like afterwards. And we will see you later. Arrivederci! Bye. <laughs>